Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are working on our Cummins Onan 10,000 watt generator in the front of our motorhome here. We're gonna be doing a bunch of maintenance on this. We are going to be replacing the oil, replacing and flushing the coolant, changing the oil filter, changing the fuel filter, changing the air filter. We're also gonna be attempting to change the belt on it and we are hopefully gonna get the valve lash done on the engine as well. There's not a lot of information about these particular generators. There's a lot of different Cummins Onan models. The 10 and 12,000 watt unit, 12,500 watt units are a little bit different. I'm gonna hopefully show you how that works. You can either follow along to hopefully help you out if you're gonna do the same thing or just so that you can watch me struggle through it. Let's get to it. So I'm fortunate that we are on a slider here, a hydraulic slider actually, so the generator comes out in the front of the motorhome. Most of these big generators are this way, but if it's not that way for you, you're probably gonna actually have to remove this. This is about an 800 pound unit, so that'll probably require a forklift. We're gonna start by just taking off a bunch of these panels. Now, if you're gonna do just like an oil change or the coolant, you might not need to remove all the panels, but because we're gonna access the belt, which in this is in the very back, I'm probably gonna take off the top and this side. We're gonna do that first and see how it goes. All right, with the engine mostly open here, we can look back here and see the belt back here. Now, this is gonna change depending on whether you have a spec A, spec B, different spec um, configuration, but the belt sits back there and then turns a fan that sits inside this uh, foam quieted air compartment. Unfortunately, the belt that I got is the wrong size. I pulled this off of some online forum, but it's not right. The Cummins Onan manual, they wouldn't give it to me, so, I'm gonna have to try to get this off and cross-reference it. But to do this, unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to take off this entire back panel and disassemble this air box because getting at that is gonna require the fan to come off. That's gonna be tricky. I think I'm gonna do this first just to see if we can get it done. I'm probably gonna have to take that to town. Then we'll move on to the next projects. All right, now we're behind the engine in the, uh, the space uh, in front of the coach and we can see the uh, the engine fan here. So we're gonna remove this and then probably remove that hub or be able to just pull that belt off that hub. Now, if you're gonna be working on any spinning parts of this engine, we'll be sure to disconnect the battery. So I'm gonna lift the ground on this, tape it off, zip tie it up and out of the way. Make sure you do that before you get onto this. Yeah, we're just gonna take that fan off and see where things go from there. First thing first, always lift the ground first. Try very hard not to touch anything else. Now this motor cannot spin. Hurt us. We can go ahead and see if we can remove this fan. Luckily, they uh, they at least standardized on a lot of the uh, sizing for our uh, everything's 10 millimeter pretty much in here. This is I think 12 or 13. One, two, three, four, and off comes the fan. Oh geez, the inner hub fell down in there. I think I think I have to take off this whole piece actually. So back to the 10 mil and then we'll take out these. Looks like a mouse was up in here. Chain on some of this stuff. We're gonna take out those 10 millimeter nuts and try to pop this off of the engine. Then I'll be able to weasel that belt out underneath there. Okay, now this should pop off and our belt is free. Now we can get it off the bottom. And it's there. All right, look how terrible that is. Okay, if you're curious, this appears to turn the water pump. This is a spec B, so crank, fan, this is the water pump, and that's what that fan turns. So let's go see if we can cross-reference this in town. All right, we got a belt. Uh, this is the 310. It's really more of a lawn belt, Kevlar wrapped. A29 is what you're looking for if you're a 29 inch or I suppose 30 outside, 31 outside. I'm not sure. A29 is what it cross reference to. They didn't have that. So we're going to put this one in. So we got the belt here and I test fit it and it turns out it's still a little loose. And what I realized is that the profile of these two belts is slightly different. This is just a tiny bit thicker. So it just binds a little bit more. It's technically the same outside diameter, but not the same profile. So I ordered an A29 belt. It'll be here tomorrow morning. So we're gonna pause on this for now. What we're gonna do now with the engine apart is that back here, 
you can get a, it's hard to show, but you can get a half inch extension in the back of the engine through the fan port to rotate the engine over. So another thing we have to do with the engine cold is the valve lash. We're gonna open up this valve cover and adjust the valve lash, and we're gonna have to turn the engine over in the direction of rotation to do that correctly. Other things we can do with the engine cold is down here, this little button down there, right there, that needs to come out. That is the spark arrester and that needs to come out. The engine needs to run hard to blow out its soot in the spark arrester. Also cold, we can replace the air filter, which is here, and the fuel filter down there. First thing I'm gonna do before I crack the engine open is blow out a lot of the dust in here. There's all sorts of dust. We wanna to try to keep this as clean as possible once we crack the top of this engine open. All right, with it all cleaned up, I just remove one little clip here. We can go ahead and Loosen up bolts for the cylinder head cover. There we go. This should just pop off here like that. And then this should just come up and off. And now we have access to our valves okay so at this point if you're going to do your own valve lash adjusting you need to have a basic understanding of four stroke engines before you get into this basically we're going to look for either cylinder overlap and we're basically going to rotate the engine around. if you know the firing order you can actually go through when you have them in the correct position and figure out where we're at. But since I don't know that, I'm just gonna look at the top of this and say, okay, I know that this is intake because it lines up and this is exhaust, so intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust. Now I'm gonna look for intake that is all the way open. So this one, intake is open, meaning that as long as I rotate that all the way around, basically once this starts to go down, this cylinder should be on its way up. And then once these are both closed, we have compression and ignition, then I can adjust the valve lash on this cylinder. Then it probably moves to this one, and then this one, I'm not exactly sure, so I'm gonna actually have to manually rotate this engine over. I'm assuming that this one's going to stay depressed and then come up. I wanna rotate in the direction of engine movement. So, okay, so that just went down a little bit more. Okay, here we go. Ah, oh, we're getting a lot of more dust up here. I don't like that. Okay, so now this one came back up and we are completely loose on both of these. So that means that this one is top dead center because the intake was open, intake closed on the upstroke. We should be at top dead center on this one. This one, we're loose on both, but we're not 100% sure. You wanna make sure that you are top dead center. Another way you can do this is we could actually pull this glow plug right here and put a rod in there and make sure that this intake had closed on the way up. But I'm pretty confident on this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and measure my lashes on here and see what we got and see if they are off at all. Now to know what your clearances are, valve clearances, we have 0 0.02 or 0.2 millimeters, intake 0.2 millimeters exhaust. You're gonna wanna go by what's on the cylinder head. That's actually different than what my manual says, but what's on the cylinder head is what's correct for your engine. So that's what you wanna do. So we're 0.2 each. Now we're gonna get our feeler gauges out. And I like these little angle gauges. It just makes it a little easier. We're gonna find, these should be in millimeters, 0.203. All right, so this one's just a little thick. Let's just see how it feels on 0.203. I think my straight gauges are correct on that. So, so we're gonna come on in here and we're just gonna put the gauge underneath and there should be just slight tension. Now this one's a little thick. That actually feels pretty close. Yeah, that feels good too. Man, I would probably say that that is just about right. Maybe it's a little loose. Let me get out my actual gauge. Okay, these are my straight gauges, which are a little harder to use. We got plenty of clearance in here. So 0.2, there we go. So it's definitely not too tight, but it doesn't feel all that bad. Yeah, I probably wouldn't adjust that. Now we'll check the other ones. Okay, so our intake's down. We're expecting to come around and then I should feel the compression. Okay, there, you get, it actually bounced back because you could feel the compression on this. So we got good compression on this engine. So now this one's starting to open its intake. 
<clears throat> and this one's exhaust. Okay, now it wants to turn over. So we're top, should be top dead center on this one here. You could also mark the flywheel and actually look to see that you've rotated one whole revolution since opening the intake. So we should be very close to TDC on this one. So once again, now that one feels a little loose. We come in here. Yeah, this one feels a lot looser than that other one. That's why we do this, because we really want them all operating the same. Yeah, that one's, there's a lot of wiggle room in here. So this one needs to be tightened up. Isn't that unusual that one would be different than another, but I find this a lot in engines. So, all right, so we want slight drag on this. So now we're gonna loosen up our tappet connections here and tighten that just the tiniest bit. So how this works is we're gonna hold this flat head piece here with this screwdriver, and then we're gonna gently loosen. There we go. Then we can turn this flathead piece just a tiny bit, usually about a quarter turn is all we want to do to start. And then we kind of lock it back with that. We'll see how that changed it. Okay, way too tight. See that? It's snug. So it's a really small adjustment. Still too snug. Can't get it in there. You can see the tiniest adjustment. Yep, that's it. That's about what the other one feels like. So we're not going to worry about this then. Once again, that feels really good. So I am not going to worry about this. We really, you really should have any time a valve is loose. You don't want to do it unless you know your top dead center, but you should have approximately the correct clearance. We're of course doing this when it's cold because as things expand, things tighten up. And if you have valves that are too tight, you can have all kinds of issues. This engine's been running great, so I'm not surprised that it's not out, but it's good to know and good to check it over. Valve lash is good. So next we're gonna do the air filter, and uh, that is in here, in this box right here. There is a latch that needs to be popped open. There might be another one, but we don't have any room to work because the coolant tank is here. So. I'm gonna have to drop that down. It looks like our hoses are attached here. We'll need to use them later anyway. I think these bolts on the top are what hold that up. Maybe not. I don't know. Let's take some bolts out and see what happens. Looks like that is what holds it. Ah, so there we go. Look at that. The whole thing just kind of comes out. Now we can just set it to the side. So this piece just kind of hooks into a metal bracket underneath there. Now we can remove these and this will pop out. And there it is. Wow, that thing is dirty. Dirty, dirty, dirty. So I don't always go OEM parts, but on certain filters, especially weird ones like this, I like to go OEM because you just never know what you're gonna get otherwise. But there's our new filter and that should just be a simple shove it in, basically. Looks identical. Oh my gosh, dirt's just falling out of it. Next, like we talked about earlier, we're going to go ahead and remove this uh, plug. That is the spark arrestor plug. We need to remove that so that when we run the generator, it blows out any soot trapped above it. So mine is an 18 millimeter. It's on the bottom of the exhaust here. Like I, uh, like I said, we have to, we actually need to put this back in oh, once we've run it for a while. So after we flush the coolant, We'll probably put this back in. So the whole top of the generator, I'll just set it on. It needs to be put back together for airflow to run it. You just run the generator under load hard for a while with this out and it blows out the soot and cleans out the spark arrestor. You know, that's soot. All right, there's two more things that can be done with the engine cold. Um, we're going to go ahead and replace the fuel filter right now, which is down here. That requires removing these bolts and pulling this thing out. It is possible that your fuel filter is located in a different location. This is just on a set of hoses. I don't know how it comes out. Just like that. There we go. So depending on your generator, this could be um, somewhere else, but ours is located down in the lower right of this uh, panel. Once again, we got the OEM part. Here's the part number. Let's take a look at it, make sure it looks correct. Yeah, that looks right. When we open this, we are going to have some fuel spillage. So be prepared for that. I'm gonna go get some 
paper towels and some gloves. And then we're basically just gonna open up these lines here. Some fuel will spill out and connect this one up. Nice brass fittings, so they should be pretty easy to open. Yep, and we're leaking fuel. I would expect some fuel leakage, but probably not too much. Okay, let me just put that. Oh, jeez. And we're just dripping all over the place. Sheesh, I got fuel all over me. It drained way more fuel than I expected, so definitely be sure to have a bucket. The smaller line from the fuel side of the engine is what drained the most. We're also going to need to remove the bracket from this to put on the new fuel pump. Now, when we go to start the engine back up, it's gonna require a much longer prime than normal and probably a couple prime cycles because it's gotta fill up all the fuel system. And the engine might sputter and die the first time if it doesn't have full fuel. So just reprime it if it does so. So I'm realizing that getting it back in, it appears like I'm gonna have to pull the oil dipstick out. Yep, that's the trick. So to get it back in, you gotta remove the oil dipstick. I don't know why it came out, but it just would not go back in without doing that. This is very snug in there. Next, we're gonna do the coolant. So I'm gonna open up this cap here and remove it to release the pressure in the system. What we're gonna do is we're gonna flush the coolant system. Pretty straightforward. I've already got a bin down here catch the spillage. This was too high, so it was spilling out here. With this open, now we can come on underneath here and open up that plug. That is a one quarter inch. Got it on my impact here. Hopefully this works. There we go. And we're just gonna drain that out. Now that it's been drained, I put the plug back in and we're just gonna refill this entire system with straight distilled water. When we run it next time, this will flush through the system and then we will flush it out one more time before putting the clean new coolant in. All right, with it full on water now, it only took about one gallon, it should take about 1.6. So we're only gonna start it for a short period of time and this level should drop because the pump will drive it through the system and then we'll fill it back up. Then we'll put the load on it to really flush it out. All right, that's as far as I can go until I get that fan belt on. So I'm just gonna close this up and we'll return again tomorrow. We gotta run the engine, warm up the oil, flush the coolant through it. Then we can change the oil, replace the coolant and it should be good to go. All right, with the correct belt in hand, we're just gonna reassemble this the way it all came apart. Uh, we're gonna have to put the sides back on because the box actually is what the air flows through. The box controls the airflow, and without that, it won't have airflow across the radiator. But I'm not gonna fully bolt down this top piece because the spark arrestor, we need to be able to access that again. So this top piece will have to come off to be able to remove that spark arrestor or plug that spark arrestor once we've loaded it up again. So. Here we go, let's uh, put it all back together. So now I'm gonna start the generator briefly with the top off just to make sure everything works. Uh, and I'm gonna take a look at this coolant level. This should drop pretty quickly as it sucks the coolant in. So we're only gonna run it for a moment and then we're going to refill this. Now it might die a couple times because it's still priming with fuel. So we're gonna hold the prime button and it should turn over for a second. We're only gonna run it for a second. Didn't turn over yet. Hmm. Hear that pump running? Maybe our battery's a little low. Plus, cool suck down. You can feel the exhaust coming out there. All right. Okay, so. Um, it actually didn't suck any more coolant down, so we're just gonna check, make sure we didn't have any leaks so then it spilled out. Everything looks pretty good. So now we're going to fill this up then so that it has some extra to pull into the system. And you can see it turned green again. So it's definitely had a lot more coolant to mix in there. And then we're gonna put it under load to 
warm it up. Before we load it, make sure that your cap is back on because that will pressurize eventually. We put quite a bit of water in here so to make sure it has extra in case it runs low. I put this metal piece from the top just down here temporarily to kind of redirect that hot exhaust because it's blowing right on those hoses. I don't know if that's a good idea. And we're gonna put the top on and we're gonna load this thing up for probably about five minutes, pretty close to full load to blow out the soot, heat up the oil and flush the coolant. All right, that is full load, 8,000 watts, all three, well, close to full load, all three ACs plus the water heater. No smoke, nice and clean, put my hand under it. Yeah, it's warm, so it's flushed the system. All right, it ran nicely. Of course, <laughs> that was just held in by the air. Uh, be sure to like shut off the breaker, let the generator cool a bit if you've got it on like a full load before just shutting it down. Just kind of helps bring the temp of the engine down a little bit. Next, we can do the oil. Uh, we're gonna let it cool just a little bit here though. And uh, we definitely wanna let it cool quite a bit before we open this again, because this should be pressurized. Yeah, a little bit, not terribly, but we don't wanna get splashed by boiling coolant or just water in this case. As for our soot here, let's see, is that hot? Oh, that is pretty warm, but we didn't burn anything. Just a little bit of soot there. Most of it probably got sucked out for the air there, but now we can put that plug back in and uh, button up this top. We're done in here. All right, changing the oil is just like changing the oil in a uh, car or any other engine. We're gonna get in here and loosen the drain plug. Gosh, that's tight. Ah, there we go. Loosen. We're gonna open the uh, oil fill cap here. Open this to allow air in. And then uh, we're just gonna drop the plug. I got gloves on. Try to spill as little as possible. Sometimes I just let the uh, the nut fall in the bucket and then we just fish it out later. And draining the oil. Now that's cool enough, we should be able to open up this cap again. We're gonna drain a little bit of, not much coolant, but there's a mixture. We're gonna drain this tank this time because we're gonna completely put in all new coolant systems. Okay, that's empty. Now we can open this again. We're gonna completely empty this system. Once again, we're just gonna reach underneath here and drain it out. All right, draining the oil and the coolant for a good flush. Now we're gonna fish out the, uh, the plug. I do that with a little magnet on a, uh, a little antenna here. Where is it? Oh, there it is. So now we can put the plug back in. We're gonna go ahead and uh, pull the oil filter now. For removing the oil filter, I really love these geared um, ratchets. If you can get your ratchet under it, I don't have enough room on this one. These I use on a lot of oil filters. Really, really helpful tool, I'll put a link to this. But for this one, we're just gonna use a, uh, a standard hand wrench here. Uh, oil wrench, of course, it's got these specific things on here to grab it. I'm just gonna grab. It may leak a little bit, so have your oily rag handy and your bucket to dump the oil out of it into. Eh, it's wanting to leak. Ah, stop leaking. All right, looks like that's most of the oil leak. Yeah, we did make a bit of a mess in there. All right, with the new oil filter, we're first gonna have to add a little bit of oil to the seal. These engines run 1540. You can run different weights, but this is kind of the, uh, the best for most temperature ranges. Just take your finger, dip it in there, some fresh clean oil, wipe it on the seal here. So it's going in with some oil on it. You do not need to pre-fill this filter on here. And as you saw, I like to write the date of the oil change right on the filter. But we do that uh, on top of the generator too. This generator takes uh, 1.6 gallons of oil supposedly. So we're gonna put a gallon in and then we'll, uh, we'll check the level because we never wanna overfill. All right, so we're kind of at the low area still. See how even mixed, it's pretty dirty. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. I don't like to fill it all the way to the top just because it gives it a little bit more breathing room and it doesn't need it full all the way to the top, especially with a filtered oil like this. We'll check it again after it's run for a while and add a little bit more. 
if necessary. Last piece is replacing the coolant. I'm just using generic coolant here, uh, ethylene glycol, the nasty poisonous stuff. Because it drained out about one gallon, we're gonna put about 50% of this stuff in and then add 50% distilled water. We've got the mark on the side here, so we're gonna go down to about two quarts and then add water, and then we'll uh, top it off as needed with about 50-50 mixture. Let's try very hard not to spill this stuff. It's gonna be a nice slow pour. If it bubbles up, just wait a second. For the final fill, you wanna lift it well above the level of everything else. And make sure that it's full there. Next, we're just gonna add a little bit to the, uh, the low mark on the overflow here. Since it's already loose, let's just fill it out here. Oh, more room. Do about a 50-50 again in here. And then we'll just do about 50% water. All right, at this point, hopefully you aren't missing any bolt. It's all put back together. Now we're just gonna run it for a while, get some load on it, and then check uh, the coolant and the oil again. If they're low, top them up. That's about all there is to it. During the generator maintenance, I do recommend that you uh, take a look at your uh, battery connections and terminals. This is a good opportunity to clean them when you're all back there and working on it. And then just kind of clean out the engine, look everything over, look for any other additional wear or anything weird. And otherwise, it should be good to go. Now that's uh, an extensive maintenance. You don't, obviously don't have to do that every oil change, but you know, oil change is the, uh, the most critical component. But all those other things need to be checked every so often according to whatever your particular maintenance manual says. As always, thank you so much for joining us here on Morton's On The Move. We like to share this kind of information and uh, stuff about RVs. We have a lots of information over on our website as well, mortonsonthemove.com. We also share uh, a lot of information via an email almost every single day or every Sunday. We offer a newsletter that we send out. So please subscribe to us over there. Subscribe to our channel here. We'll see you down the road. Stay safe, everyone. Bye.